Good morning, Europe. Uh, good afternoon, Southeast Asia. Uh, welcome to our webinar on the risk of online selling and intellectual property infringement uh, brought to you by the um, European Chamber of Cambodia at the Southeast Asia IPR SME Help Desk. But before we start, uh, uh, okay, this is me. It's not that relevant, but I will be the moderator today. I am the business advisor for the IPR SME Help Desk, and I will talk about this a little bit later. But uh, I want, first of all, to introduce you to the platform. If you are not familiar with, uh, you have um, some functions. I think the most important one is uh, the question. Um, box where you can type all your questions if you have any request also practical one you can use that channel or the chat to communicate with us uh, don't worry that uh, the webinar is recorded and it will be uploaded very soon on our website so if you miss something or you cannot say with us the entire hour you will find the recording later uh, this being said uh, this is our um, agenda. Uh, first of all, I will uh, briefly introduce the uh, help desk and uh, your chum Cambodia. And then uh, uh, the, I will leave the floor to our expert uh, uh, to discuss uh, the main topic. Before, um, before um, I give the floor to uh, our uh, speaker, uh, I will also ask you a small question, a poll question that will pop up on your screen. Uh, don't worry, just answer. It should be quite intuitive. So, as for us, the IPR SME App Desk is an um, initiative of the European Commission, and uh, we are based in Vietnam, but we cover the entire Southeast Asia. Our mission is to help small and medium companies that do business in Southeast Asia to uh, deal with their intellectual property in a safe way. Uh, we also want to spread a better intellectual property culture, uh, so we welcome also uh, the people from the region itself. Uh, we offer a completely free package of services from an inquiry helpline, so we basically answer your questions in three working days, but uh, we also have a lot of uh, materials online on our website, um, from um, uh, guides to fact sheets to interactive e-learning modules. And as you can probably guess now, we organize webinars and when there is no pandemic, we also organize on-site uh, trainings. Um, today, I will also briefly introduce you to the services of Eurocham Cambodia that we want all to thank you for uh, helping us in organizing this uh, webinar. Um, Eurocham Cambodia is the largest international business association in Cambodia and um, they have they organize a lot of activities for their members from uh, breakfast talk to sector specific forums networking session and um, they also uh, promote um cambodia to the to the chamber uh, um sorry promote cambodia to the europeans but also europe to the cambodian and also helps the um the European uh, companies in their relationship uh, with the royal government uh, to improve the business in the kingdom. Uh, this kind of service is called usually advocacy. And uh, in general, they help uh, to they support companies and institutions to enter and enhance or expand their activity in Cambodia through paid advisory services. That's uh, what they, in a nutshell, what they do um they are uh, despite the the pandemic uh, that has heavily impacted the activities um they are moving many of their um activity online and the team the team remained active in collecting summarizing and translating official government announcements to keep the business community informed for those interested in how covid 19 has affected cambodia you can check their website they have uh, they are they have a lot of very useful in information and also you should uh, consider to um, participate in their uh, updated uh, tax webinar uh, that is going to take place the 10th of june 
So with this, I, um, I, I want to, again, I want to use this moment to again, uh, thank you, uh, Eurocharm Cambodia for the support, for spreading the words to the um, members and to cooperate with us in this uh, situation. Uh, before we start uh, uh, with the main uh, topic of our uh, webinar, I would like uh, to want to launch a poll uh, for, uh, for you. With a, with a question, just to warm up the audience. I would like to know um, if you have uh, any registered IP in Cambodia, and or if you are planning to do it in the future, uh, if yes, no, or not sure, which is an interesting answer. Um, you have um, more or less one minute to vote, and then we will start. Uh, so, I think we can uh, close uh, the poll and see what are the results. I think the results are now shown on your screen. So, basically, we see that a very strong majority has not registered um, an IP in uh, Cambodia. Uh, if I can spoil a little bit, uh, spoiler alert, is not a good idea. And I'm sure that uh, Thea will uh, explain very well why. Uh, I will now leave the floor uh, to our expert, um, who is a partner at Abacus IP and um, is, sorry, is, um, he works with the Department of Intellectual Property and is also uh, certified by the WIPO and um, is, is leading um, a very important uh, Cambodian law firm, which is the Abacus IP. And he will not just present you uh, the topic, but he will also be here to answer your questions. So I will uh, highly encourage you not to lose this opportunity. Uh, so now, uh, Thea, I make you the presenter and the floor is yours. Thank you to all uh, listeners out there and to the organizers at the Southeast Asia IPO SME Help Desk and also uh, thank to European uh, Europe, Eurocharm for making this event uh, possible. So yes, uh, from the poll, we, I, I understand that most of the attendees not re uh, register any IP in Cambodian. We have like 57% uh, and 30% say yes. So, uh, uh, in the next few slides, I will uh, uh, present uh, how to register your IP in Cambodian and then the, the option available for you. So the topic of my presentation today is uh, so the topic is uh, for my presentation today is risk of online selling and IP infringement in Cambodia that uh, covers a lot of different issues from uh, privacy to domain names to copyright infringement to method uh, processing. Uh, we cannot go into deep on everything but just want to paint a broad picture of, of what uh, uh, the risks are in the first point and the second, uh, secondly how important IP infringement is to e-commerce business. Second, I will uh, uh, look. We will look at how to protect your IP right around the world and uh, Cambodia. And then uh, third and fourth, I will 
present you an overview of the recent e-commerce law and domain name uh, domain protection uh, globally and also in uh, Cambodia. And finally, we will conclude with the issue of infringement and fake product being sold online by uh, a scammer taking advantage of the global uh, public health crisis. I think that's a lot uh, to cover. Let us start. The moment you turn uh, your e-commerce sites on, you basically will waving a flag to hacker and bad, bad actor looking to take advantage. They are on look out for new business and will seek exploit uh, any weaknesses. This can be uh, through uh, phishing, denial service, hacking, ransomware, and many uh, tactics. So what you can do, make security a top priority from day one. This is a most uh, mostly a technical issue. Uh, I'm not an expert on, but involving making sure your site probably coded, secure firewall, inscription, backup, software updates and maintenance and so forth. I don't want to scare you, but a security breach can be a really a business killer. For instance, a ransomware attack is when the hacker takes control of your computer system and threaten to do a permanent damage unless you pay. They can take you everything you have and then you have you need to prepare for it. I put here is copying in the code because all those that is what can happen and will feel wrong to you. It might not actually be violated of law. Let's say you have a great idea for an e-commerce selling a product that no one else is selling online or selling it in some totally new way that's going to make you a lot of money. Uh, the moment you, you lie, you are you are not just advertising yourself to a customer, but you also advertise yourself to a potential competitor. That's very uh, unsuccessful uh, successful business out there. Those business model is uh, to copy other business, uh, other uh, people business. They they scan the world for new business going online, and if they decide to make enough. Uh, money they rapidly replica replicate your business and might be uh, might even do a better job of it than you that would feel terrible and just yes, unless you have a real potent a patentable in innovation or unless this competitor is engaging in unfair competition there is like nothing you can do about it legally speaking put uh, simply you don't own your business model uh, they can and if you are successful we'll copy it and the risk of doing business uh, plan for it and use your mover advantages to defend against it the third major risk is intellectual property is uh, ip so ip is an umbrella term that uh, a three most relevant form of ip for e-commerce are uh, patent copyright and trademark. Patents cover innovation products or processes. So in the context of e-commerce, a product might be uh, selling through your site could be covered by patent. Your average smartphone is covered by ten of thousands of patents. Second is copyright, uh, copy, copyright, which is cover all text and image on your site as well as a software coded behind it. And the third one is trademark, it's covering your brand name and logo, but also a brand names and logo of all products on your site. There are a few other form of IP that might be relevant, but uh, these are the main one. The risk is twofold. First, you are infringing someone's LIP, and you might think yourself that uh, cannot be. Uh, you are a harness, carefully business person, but uh, decent business people infringe every day, often unwittingly. For example, one of the product you are selling, it could be infringe a pattern. 
Remember those uh, 10,000 of patterns in the smartphone? If you be in the frame, the patents holder will go after the e-commerce seller. And another example, it use some type for a product description or image without permission that would be a copyright infringement. See, can someone else uh, might be infringing your IP right? For instance, they are using a name, a logo that are confusingly similar to yours or register a slightly different domain name, or they are copying a uh, content directly from your site. So because of uh, the IP is, uh, is, uh, is such a broad field, so uh, we cannot go into uh, deep for each type of infringement, but uh, I urge you to educate yourself and take uh, IP seriously because much of your business is dependent on it. So in the next slide, we are going to cover the part, uh, the protection of your IP in Cambodia and uh, abroad. It's so a very important point about IP is, is it national? That is national. So uh, there is no such a thing like a, a worldwide patent or worldwide trademark, rather it can be patent register in Cambodia, another one register in Thailand, another register in the US. If you don't have right in a country, uh, uh, some one from someone is infringing that you might think uh, should be your, so you are probably out of luck. Furthermore, your e-commerce business is accessible throughout the world, unlike a brick uh, motor store, which might only care about Cambodian market. Your business, with respect to IP at least, it's global from day one. So in the next slide, we will go to the to the uh, 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 overview on how to uh, protect your IP uh, in Cambodia and abroad. So as I previously uh, present, so uh, the main one is a patent, trademark, and copyright. So let's talk about the patent one. So patents are registered with the Department of Industry Property of the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology, and Innovation. The old name of this ministry is Ministry of Industry and Handicraft. So uh, they changed the name to the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation uh, this year. So there are many options uh, that the business people may use to protect their patent in Cambodia and abroad. To protect your patent abroad, there are two uh, options available. First, filing your application direct to a country where you wish to uh, protect it by claiming a 12-month priority based on Paris Convention, meaning you have to file your patent application in the third country within 12 months in order to obtain the priority date. So because you may not know your patent is patentable or not, in a short period of time, so you may waste of uh, waste, uh, waste money in just filing your application without knowing it then or not. So the another option is uh, you can uh, a Cambodian is a member of a patent cooperation treaty, so which uh, came into force on December eight, uh, twenty sixteen. Uh, business people can uh, file their patents using uh, patent cooperation treaty, we call a PCT system. This system is an uh, international filing system administered by uh, World Intellectual Properties Organization, BIPO. And, and you may have uh, plenty of time to decide where you wish to protect your patent, and you may know whether your patent is patent or not before you making a decision to protect in the third uh, country. In Cambodia, uh, while several hundred applications have been filed in years since, uh, uh, since we have a law, none had been granted. In 2015, the Ministry of Industry, Science and Technology concluded a MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding on the co-cooperation co with the uh, uh, 
I post uh, into properties of Singapore's office, resulting in the first patent being granted in 2015 through this uh, uh, co cooperation. And similarly, the ministry also signed a joint uh, statement of intent with the uh, JPO, the J Japan Patents Office, in uh, 2016 and signed the agreement, a similar agreement with the European Patents Office in 2000, in 2017. And then they signed an MOU with the State Insurance Properties Office of China in 2018. And finally, last year, they signed the agreement with the Korean uh, Insurance Properties Office, KIPO. So, uh, which allow a uh, further option for filing and protecting patents in Cambodia. Uh, we have noticed that uh, a number of patent applications have been increasing. In 2019, the Patents Office received almost 200 applications. That is only for uh, the Chinese uh, patents through the MOU. So we, we see the, 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 the number of patents have been filed in Cambodian uh, start increasing because we have uh, uh, several options uh, for the, the foreign, I mean, uh, foreign business to protect their patent in Cambodian and uh, Let's continue to the uh, trade map. So uh, uh, all trade map are applied for and registered with the Ministry of Commerce, Department of Insurance Property Right. So there are two uh, systems are available. You can file it uh, national directly filing, or you can use the matrix system. So the Department of Intro property right as a, a single mark application with the multi classes and uh, uh, the official fee, I mean the filing fee must be paid for each class. So if you're foreign applicant, it, it must be uh, represented by Cambodian, uh, Cambodia, then a trademark agent and the power of attorney will be required from the foreign applicant to the local agent. Uh, when the mark, when your trademark application claim like a priority that under the Paris Convention, it must be uh, filed or made it within six months from the date of early application. And the copy certify of priority document can be uh, submitted uh, to the DAP, Department of Intellectual Properties, right within three months from the date of request from the registrar. So another uh, option Another uh, option to file uh, your your mark in Cambodian is using the matrix system. So uh, Cambodian became a member of the matrix system, the matrix system for international registration of mark on June 5th, uh, 2015. So the system uh, facilitated the filing uh, application in multiple uh, countries around the globe rather than having to file one, uh, uh, file a trademark application in each country. So the brand owner can file just file single uh, application with their national or regional IPs office, and then select the country where they want to register it. This is a greatly simplify and reduce cost of process. That's more than 110 country as a part of this Madrid system. So if you outside the outside Cambodian and they want to protect your trademark in Cambodian before moving your business here. So you can file either by national or direct filing, or you can uh, use the matrix system if you plan to register your mark in Cambodian and also neighboring country. So uh, I think uh, you can use the matrix system because uh, Vietnam, Thailand, and other neighboring countries are a member of the matrix system. So just uh, designate the country and then you will uh, get your mark be protected before you move your business in here. So another uh, man of IP is uh, copyright. So uh, a copyright and relative rights offers also the original work instead of exclusive economic and moral right as uh, stated in the article one of the law, they provide uh, legitimate exploitation 
of their cultural product, this law aims to co contribute to the development of culture. So the copyright law uh, enacted in uh, 2003 as a part of uh, accession to the uh, World Trade Organization. And Cambodia is a member of a trade-related aspect of intellectual properties, right? We call it trade. But uh, Cambodian is not a member of Ban Convention for Protection of Literary or Artistic Work. So if you're if you're foreign, I mean uh, you 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 have uh, you have your your work outside Cambodian and uh, you want to protect, so you have to meet the criteria provided in uh, the law in a uh, copyright law. So the work that can be protected, like all kinds of books. Literary, artistic, lecture, speech, music, compo composition, also uh, work, painting. So this kind of uh, uh, work is uh, protected, is eligible for protection in Cambodia. So uh, if I think uh, in the law, they list uh, some work that are not protected. Also, so uh, make sure that your work is falling into this uh, criteria. So the next one is uh, design. So uh, design quite similar to uh, this, the system. I mean, the system is quite similar to the, the trademark because they have like a national uh, filing, uh, direct filing, and then they have like HEC system, which is uh, administered by uh, a WIPO. So you can file directly into Cambodia or you can use hack system because uh, you can use just one single application and then pay one free and this in Cambodia this is a, 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 a easy system to protect uh, your design industry design in uh, Cambodia so let's move to the e-commerce uh, law which is a reason law that passed last year so the third topic is uh, e-commerce law on electronic commerce is passed last year so uh, the law provide much greater uh, legal certainty for online business and activity it also imposes uh, a certain obligation on e-commerce market and this poses a form of legal risk the risk of major topic of law treated is a liability of e-commerce platform and other intermediary for information contained in their system. They treat, for, for example, a user-generated content uploaded into intermediary website that infringe copyright or defend, defames someone. In the early day of internet, the law in the certain country made a platform legally liable for this information, even though they don't create it themselves, but rather than rather distribute it, that obviously create a huge platform for a uh, problem for the platform. And the, the law of most countries was amended to limit their liability. That's that that's one that what this provision of e-commerce law finally does in Cambodia. So to avoid a criminal and civil liability, the service provider must uh, first not have created the information themselves. Uh, this just a cover information from third uh, party. Second, not actually know the information made them liable. Third, should not know it made them liable. And once they become aware of the potential liability, they comply with takedown procedure. The detail of the procedure will be specific in the future regulation. The e-commerce law set for future licensing uh, obligation, the Ministry of Post Telecommunication issue uh, online uh, service certificate and then we see a commerce uh, uh, electronic business license so all of the detail remain uh, to be uh, specified in sub degree so no clear uh, time frame on when uh, that will happen 
Second, as a part of licensing scheme, there will be a professional code of conduct imposes on uh, e-commerce side. Again, all the detail, uh, the detail remain uh, to be seen. The electronic payment and fraud transfer. The operator of the payment system are required to obtain prior authorization from the National Bank of Cambodia. The chapter set for responsibilities of uh, payment uh, service provider as well as their um, liability. For instance, in case of unauthorized charge or fraud, the customer are required to notify the payment uh, service provider of answerai mistaken wrongful transaction within two business of uh, recovery. The e-commerce provider to provide a minimum amount of information about themselves and their term and condition, so such as a name of business, register address, email, phone number, term condition, including a payment method, cancellation, and return of good or refund. Unsolicited communication, also known as a spam email, that require unsubscribe option. This is only requirement that uh, and, and a very low standard uh, compared to other uh, many other country which require uh, actual consent before you, you send the uh, unsolicited email. Finally, there is uh, one a very short article in the law governing data protection, quite broad and vague, but essentially require anyone holding uh, personal information, so name of the customers and credit card info, for instance, reasonably protect its illegal, uh, protect again and also right uh, access. Domain name uh, are an important part of any uh, e-commerce operation. They are not just a way that users navigate your site, but also a part of your branding, things like Amazon.com or Booking.com. When you are starting to think of the name of your business, you 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 will want to make sure that it's not only you get trademark protection, but also registering or more likely several domain names. Just because you have a trademark registration does not mean you will necessarily be able to register or prevent others from registering associated domains. You will want to see if your business name plus .com is available and maybe also .net or .info and country level ending as well. You should know, uh, you should look at uh, what is available in closing, uh, in close spelling or misspelling or variation of your, your, your name. In more cases, you will go through the domain name registrar that handle a critical and administrative element that first come for serve. So if the one you really desire have been taken, you might seek to purchase it. In many cases, you will find that domain is not actually being used, but rather uh, has been uh, bought by a squatter uh, looking to sell to the higher uh, price. The price can range anywhere from less than 100 to million, depending on the popularities of uh, the words. The telecommunication uh, regulator of Cambodia uh, is the registrar for the KH domain names. The most important thing to note here is that uh, only Cambodian entity or individual can register KH domains. You won't find this freely available on the global uh, online registrar. You have to go to the telecommunication regulator of Cambodia and you have to prove your connection to Cambodia in order to get a KH a domain. They offer the following variation like uh, .com.kh, uh, .net.gov, .edu.kh. For the 
ka.com or uh, net.ka uh, sorry for k8 dot uh, for dot com dot k8 or net dot k8 you have to have incorporated a Cambodian company and submit the certification of incorporation but for uh, or or uh, org dot k8 you have to be a registered NTO under the Ministry of Interior or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and so for other variation like .gov or .edu. The registration can be uh, done online and is subject to annual fee compared to uh, a .com. It's rel relatively expensive. So many business forgo a .com .ka, but it can be a good marketing tool as it conveys the connection to the, the country. Finally, uh, we will conclude with the word of uh, a flag product in the context of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. A scammer and criminal around the world have been uh, take, uh, can advantage of pandemic and the Cambodian has not been uh, included. That obviously been a surge in uh, demand for the product related to the pandemic, especially for um, face masks and other personal protective equipment, test kit, soup, hand uh, sanitizer, and other, in some places, even toilet uh, paper that increased in demand and has kept price and made it much more attractive for the uh, scam, scammer to sell a uh, fake or substandard product. Uh, Cambodian government uh, has uh, six eighty towns of sub uh, standard hand uh, sanitizer from uh, made from methanol and has warned the public to be uh, extra vigilant. This has been also a rest and seizure of fake COVID nineteen test kit. So much of this product can be uh, found online through e-commerce site where it is all but impossible to verify uh, the product before you uh, place uh, an, L an order. So, uh, Martha, that's all for my uh, presentation today. Yudea, uh, thanks a lot for the very, very interesting presentation. I see that um, there are uh, some some questions, but first of all, I want to thank you all the participants, and I want to encourage all of them to ask more questions. Uh, there was a question, a general one that has already been answered, but just to clarify, IP stands for intellectual property, and IPR stands for intellectual property rights. Uh, and then there is another question that asks uh, from uh, Max Matov. What is the biggest website selling fakes in Cambodia? Thea, what do you think? <clears throat> Thea, can, can you hear me? I, okay, I'm, okay. So, okay. Sorry, uh, I was asking, um, there is a, a question that says, what is the biggest website selling fakes in Cambodia? So thank you for this question, and uh, I think I think uh, it's very it's very hard, difficult to to identify which which one is the the biggest website that's selling fake in Cambodian. But uh, what I seen here, so almost I think an e-commerce website, uh, the the owner of e-commerce website sometimes they don't register with the Ministry of uh, uh, Ministry of Commerce. They, they don't set up a company, but rather than individual owning the the website or or, sh or social media like Facebook, and then they promote product, but their product is not like a, a, a genius product, just a, a counterfeit or fake one. So uh, from my understanding, I think it's very uh, hard to identify which one is the biggest. But uh, if if yeah. we found which one is the biggest? I think they will no longer exist here because yes. the owner of the yeah because the owner of the 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 the, the real product the Chinese product will shoot them 
and take down the, the website and close the business. Yes, the same person was also asking if the police uh, intervene in this under counterfeiting uh, uh, procedure, like taking down the the website. But you were saying is mostly like the owner that should uh, the owner of the infringed um, thing to notify the police. They don't act themselves, or how is uh, this situation organized? Uh, I think the police, yeah, the police can uh, at least one one you find the uh, infringing website or someone uh, selling a counterfeit uh, product or fed product. So the the owner will uh, shoot them to the uh, police, and the police yeah. will 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 work on their procedure and cooperate cooperation with like a prosecutor. And then go directly to the, I mean the 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 person who's selling a fake or or counterfeit product, and then arrest them. And then one day arrest, okay. and then they will send they will send that person to the court, and then the court will order like uh, to take down website, remove everything, destroy yes. the code and service. So uh, this is in the next step. Once you have like a judgment from the 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 from the, court. The, the the court, yeah. And there is another. There is a rather practical question that is, what are, what's the price, what's the fee for a trademark registration? And she, uh, the the um, uh, Miss Fatima is uh, asking for uh, brand uh, name and logo, so trademark uh, registration in in Cambodia. What's the pr price range right, for the fee? Okay. Uh, thank you for this uh, question. So. Uh... The, the the official fee I I'm, I talk about the official fee okay when you file the application and then until granted you have to pay like a uh, hundred and five only for one mark and one class one class it means you register one mark in one classification one product like 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 for example like you you, you register uh, a mark in or uh, for clothes okay for clothes shoe so you can put a close and shoe and then you have to pay uh, of one class this is one class and then if you want to uh, broader protect your mark with other classes like you you want to protect it for the service so we call it two class so one is the gold and then one another one is a service so you have to pay uh, 105 for one mark and one class okay uh thank you and then there, are, there is a person who is interested in um, IP in, on uh, for educational video and is asking, like, how is this, uh, how about IP rights on educational video and if there is a specific law on educational video in Cambodia, like an exception from copyright, I will, I will assume, or something like this. Do you, do you want to address this question, Thea, or? Uh... Does the Cambodian has a law on IP right for education video? Yeah, I mm. think. Uh, yeah, I think uh, one is is to consider whether the copyright infringement happens or not. You have to like like uh, to know the criteria for education purpose. I don't think is a uh, infringement because the law. I think our law, our copy law, a law. Uh, to take any content or video just for education purpose, not not uh, earning profit. So you have to prove that you show the video, you 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 make a video for education and then not profit. So this is uh, should be a law by law. Okay, uh, thank you. And then uh, we go for the last uh, question, which is also about online infringement. Uh, and he's asking how they can uh, address uh, um, the, um, uh, the Facebook infringement, um, like people selling, basically pretending to be another company on Facebook, how they can address this uh, problem. Uh, like Facebook I think, uh, pages. I, yeah, if, if you are the real owner of the brand of the map in Cambodian, or if you are uh, authorized 
uh, distributor or authorized uh, seller, retailer in Cambodia. So you can uh, show them, okay, show them to the police. Uh -huh. And then the police will take action to to take down the Facebook uh, 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 media. Yeah. So so yeah. So uh, and I think yeah, you can also and, like refer it directly to Facebook to cancel the yeah, page. Yeah. But also in that yeah. case, you have to prove because maybe I don't know where this person is uh, is located. Uh, maybe cannot be very easy to contact the Cambodian police while Facebook is uh, international. So I, if you yeah, are not in Cambodia or in the, the country where the infringement is happening, you can contact Facebook. Otherwise, the police is better because they can actually stop the infringement, not just taking down the page, but just for not a local, uh, there yeah. is also this, um, this option. And yeah, yes, I said I already, um that that was the last question but i see that there are uh, still a couple that can be interesting so um uh, there is okay uh, regarding the educational video um maybe we can send to edward the um, uh, the, the law reference because he was asking uh, if he can check the criteria so maybe we will send him the the law later okay and um, there is a question regarding if there is an infringement on IP, for example, trademark, do we need to go to court? What's, what are the... Um, yeah, uh, so... Uh, what are the options? Okay, I, I, I think if there is infringement, I, uh, trademark infringement, uh, we have a several option to deal with this. So uh if you identify uh someone who's selling like a fat product or counterfeit product first of all uh, i recommend to send like a cis and the cis letter to the infringer and then ask them to respond and then if they not, don't respond it you uh -huh. can go to the you can file a letter to the department of intellectual property right for mediation so the ministry will call that person to sit in the on the table and discuss okay and, and also and, and, yeah please and they will they, they, and they will stop uh they will stop uh using or, or sometimes they they like uh uh they don't yeah. stop you can go to the court this is the final but a most uh, i think it's more expensive than than the, the yeah the it's a lot more expensive yeah, yeah. Yeah. um and then also uh they are asking to specify what kind of police should be involved uh like um what's what's like it's the police in the street or there are special departments that take care of it i yeah. think this is the question there is a special department we call anti uh, economic police which is located in the ministry of interior okay it's not, lo it's not local police you can you, you <laughs> have to go to the, to the ministry Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that with this we can consider uh, our question and answer finished because also we are reaching the one hour limit, which is the maximum le level of attention that people can uh, can have. I encourage everyone that has questions still to mail them to us and we will be happy to answer via email to other question if you something was either not clear or not addressed please write to us we are very happy to help you and uh, with this i want to thank you again thank again uh, thea for the very interesting presentation and uh, i want to thank you your Cham cambodia Aiden, if you want to say hello to everyone it's your moment but I just want to thank you, thank you Eurocham Cambodia for the cooperation and thank you uh, our speaker again and all the attendees. I hope to uh, see you soon in uh, our future webinars and um, the, the slides and the recording will be available on our website uh, probably already tomorrow morning uh, and we will send you a thank you note with a nice reminder that it's online. Uh, so again, if you have more questions, feel free to mail us.
and thank you again. Have a nice afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you, Mata. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. It's Aiden from your attempt. Aiden. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye.